Hey, my name is Mark Romanak, and you're watching another episode of Fishing 411. It's Thanksgiving weekend. We're in northern Michigan, and the sane people have put their boat away for the year. We're definitely not sane. Stick around and see what we can catch this late in the season. Offshore Tackle presents Fishing 411 with Mark Romanak. Gobbled. Gobbled up there. <laughs> Look at that, he's in the bag. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, the leader in trolling technology. Okuma, high performance. Vicious Fishing. Northwest Ontario Tourism, there's no place like this. Jay Sporting Goods. Get in gear. And by Yakima, home of the rooster tail. Oh man, well that just tells me that I'm gonna to have to be the net man here. You know, our late season smallmouth adventure, it was had two different guests on it. We had, of course, one of our pro staffers who's been on Fishing 411 many times, um, Kendall Ulsh. And you've seen Kendall do a number of bass fishing shows with us. He's our bass fishing authority. But we also had a second guest, and his name is Mike Elkins. And Mike Elkins and Kendall are actually tournament fishing partners. And so those guys spend an awful lot of time together. And having the two of them in the boat was kind of a unique situation because it was almost like I was the third wheel. Those guys work hand in hand, and I was doing my best to try to keep up with them. Small mouth. Uh oh. All right, now, I'm, now I don't know which way to go here. I got him, I got him on both sides we of the boat here. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just be all time net man here. Let's take a look here. I go for Mike. Mine's only about three and a half pounds. I can horse him. I got Oh, fishing. I got a big I got fishing. All right, all right, all right. Mike, you get to be the guy here. All right. Oh, yeah. I want to net this one. This one's a pretty good one. That's a Lift his head up a little higher. He's sliding in. Oh, look at that. That is a nice one. That is a nice one. Mr. Mike, look at that fish. <laughs> That's why you come in the snow. That's why we fish in the blizzard. So this is why we're fishing in 30 degree weather. Well, right. Mine's only like three pounds. Mike's got a five back there. That is a beautiful fish. Holy, holy. Look how long that fish is. Yeah, you know, whatever. They are so fat and happy. Oh yeah. Mark, that bait was laying flat on the bottom when that fish bit it, and so was the one I missed. So you want to let that thing fall to the bottom and lay there. They're, they're picking it up off the bottom. The setting for this episode is a place called the Bel Air Chain of Lakes up in northwest lower Michigan. There's a whole series of lakes in that area that are actually pretty famous for their smallmouth fishing. But we were doing it much later in the season than most people would be doing it. We were actually the weekend after Thanksgiving. Now one thing we've talked about is how cold it is. I mean, you can't feel our fingers or toes. And unlike a lot of guys, I fish right up until I can't get my boat in the water anymore and then continue to fish wherever I can find open water. It's one of the great things about my E-Tech is I can actually winterize this boat before I put it on the trailer today just by a couple simple steps with the keystrokes. And it'll fog the motor and then even better, if it gets 60 degrees next week, I can just pull it out of the garage and hit the water again do it all myself. No need to take it to the dealer, no other winterization, I'm all set. Oh yeah. Nice. Oof. That's a walleye, baby. That is not a smallmouth. What is going on here? What is going on here? That's lunch is what that is. Yeah. Look at that. How much for this be a crappy walleye lake, eh? Caught the last walleye in the lake right there. I can barely even get enough of a grip on it to pick him up. Oh. Remember the first one of these I caught and I lifted? <laughs> that hurt. 
<laughs> nice and right there. Additional considerations provided by Evan Root Outboards and StarCraft Marine. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country. There we go. There we go. Little bite. There's a fish. Let me get a net here for you, Kendall. I just made a perfect cast. Now I got to reel it in. Oh, this is a nice one. Nice. Oh, let's see if we can free it. By the way. Well, that is a good fish. That's a three pounder, I think. Oh, he might be a little bigger. That's a good fish. Get off the three pound snide. Skinny little punk, isn't he? Look how white he is. It's almost the same color as that blade bait, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of sand down there. <laughs> so what are these bass actually thinking this blade bait is? I mean, are they, are they actually think this is food or are they just reactionary on this stuff? Well, I think it's a couple things. You know, we, we get away from plastics a little bit this time of year, uh, except for on a drop shot. And the way we fish a drop shot, you know, a lot of times we'll drop it on their head, you know, which causes a reaction bite. So I think this thing serves a couple purposes. It's got some a little vibration, uh, it's got a little flash, and it stays close to the bottom, and I think that's what does it. I think it's a reaction. Oh, baby. It's gonna try and jump. That's not Get a on the one. net, Mike. A, Get on uh, the net. I don't think we need a net, Mike. This is just a two pounder here. I think we're good here. I don't think you're gonna think. A lot. Two pounder? Pretty generous. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe we'll go to a pounder. Mark's getting the feel for it, though. You know, and that kind of brings me back to what we were just talking about. You know. Fishing this blade takes a little bit of confidence, and this is the best place to get it is where there's numbers of fish. Can't you take me to a place where there's numbers of fish and it's not 30 degrees? No. Because no. that would be nice. I'd like to learn this when it's not 30 degrees out. You know, the smallmouth episode was filmed late enough in the season that some of the lakes that we were fishing, the docks were already pulled and some of them, the docks were still in the water. So it was at that ragged edge, just literally just a few weeks before freeze up. And that's amazing that people don't realize, but you can catch smallmouth even in those extreme cold water conditions. That's a good solid fish, Mike. That is a good solid fish. Staying down very nicely. I still have not eyeballed it yet. Oh, there he is. Good solid fish. That's a nice oh, one. Oh, he's going to give a little, little jump here at the last second. Ah, Mike has got the big fish thing going on today. That's, oh, that's a beautiful fish. That is a beautiful fish. One of the things you can do is get fishing these things too fast. You know, these fish are really lethargic because the water's so cold. So I just finished telling Mark, I thought I was fishing the bait too fast. So I really slowed down, let it lay on the bottom in between drags. And that was the first thing that happened. I went to pick up and there was one on there. So, you know, you've really got to, got to concentrate in this kind of fishing. It's not just something you can just go cast for. What we're fishing out here is a big, deep flat. It's about 30 feet, comes off a real steep edge. And these fish just come up here in the winter time, early, early in the spring. I, frankly, I think they winter here most of the year. And uh, they come up in here and feed, and we're just kind of intercepting them here. And, and there's kind of a, a small V here where the, the bank, it goes in close to the bank and then cuts back out. And that's kind of the center of where these fish are at. You just have to kind of feel around until you can find them. The good news is with good electronics, you can see them because you're in deep enough water, so a lot of the time we don't even start fishing until we can actually see fish down there. So it's one of the ways you can find them. Well, what Mike's talking about these fish kind of wintering in this area is not uncommon with other species of fish that are related to smallmouth. Smallmouth are actually members of the sunfish family, the Suntrocate family. And all of those fish, bluegills, uh, smallmouth, largemouth, uh, even crappie tend to move into deep water late fall and they stay there pretty much all winter and it's not until the water starts to warm up again in the spring that they move shallow again. I'm ready. I'm ready to be fixed. Ah. Solid. That's a four pounder. Yeah. Look how thick they are. Yeah. This fish is probably three inches wide there in the belly. That's a nice one. Nice and ain't real long, but he is thick. You know, the fall smallmouth fishery up here is tremendous, and it goes a lot later than most people realize. Look at here. We're talking snowball weather. 
Literally, you can catch these fish right up until you can't get on the water anymore, until the ice closes the launches in. In fact, most of the launches that we were visiting, and we visited several during this trip, didn't have the docks in. So that makes it a little hard to get in and out, but the fishing is worth it. Fishing 411 is brought to you in part by Precision Trolling Data, the Troller's Bible, now available in an app. Mark Romanex Fishing 411 is brought to you in part by O.J. Herman Company. You know, we're all doing the same basic presentation, but we're doing it slightly different with slightly different tackle. Kendall up there is throwing a bait casting outfit, and he's got uh, vicious fluorocarbon on that. I'm a little bit uncomfortable throwing a bait caster in windy conditions like this for fear of backlashes, so I've opted to go with a spinning rod. This is a seven foot, medium light action Alcuma here. I've got braided line, 10 pound test vicious on it, and then I've tied that off to a shock leader of fluorocarbon, 15 pound test, and that's working pretty good for me. Mike over here has got about the same rig that I've got going on, something very similar as well. So both operations will work. If you're comfortable with a bait caster, go with the bait caster. If you're not comfortable, rig it up for um, a spinning outfit, and you can get this done with a spinning outfit as well. So even though Mark's liking the uh, spinning setup a little more, I almost always opt for the casting. I think I get a lot more distance out of my cast because of the, the, the ability to cast with that low profile reel. The other thing I've, I've got is I'm using a medium light casting rod. You might think that's a little too light, but for the application it really works out good. I don't move the bait that far when I lift it because the rod absorbs a lot of that energy. So it's kind of more just scuttling across the bottom. It's also nice and light so I can feel the light bites. And uh, in this cold weather I don't have to worry about shocking my line with hook sets. Kendall, I'm still not 100% comfortable on the whole blade bait thing. I'm not sure why we're using a blade bait in this cold water, why we're not using a jig or a jigging spoon, more traditional cold water stuff. I think it's probably a lot to do with the reaction. You know, with a jig, you just got something that's kind of dragging along the bottom. Uh, I don't really think with the water, you know, when it's this cold, I think they pretty much finished up their fall feeding. And, and right now they're in a winter pattern. Uh, Mike's always told me he believes they just don't feed this time of year unless they have to. And, and this bait really gives them a reaction because it's a quick up and then it falls to the bottom and lays lifeless. And that really seems to be what triggers them to bite. And I, I don't think you can drag a jig and coax them into it. I think you really have to make them snap at it. And, uh, and this bait gives them a reaction. We're fishing these blade baits and I got to emphasize that this is a bottom contact bait. And it's real critical, you know, everybody wants to cast and close the bale start fishing, really got to get these baits on the bottom. And We're using half ounce blades, 30 foot of water, they take probably eight or nine seconds to get to the bottom. And I watch my line, and your line has a certain amount of tension on it, and once that bait hits the bottom, it'll just kind of get a bow in it. And uh, with the right rod and reel and line set up like we all have today, we're able to feel it when we pick it up, and then when it hits the bottom again, and when there's something different or a lack of a bottom hit, that's when we know we got a fish. But keeping them on the bottom is definitely the key. This isn't a bait you fish fast. That's some head shake going. Ooh, that's a nice one. Let me get the net. I think we do have a netter. That is a nice in there. Look at the size of that one. Whoa, baby. Do your thing. Oh, man. Do your thing right into the net. Oh. Hopefully she's gonna do just that. That is a nice fish. Oh no! Oh, it's a pike and it's oh, a nice no. one! Oh, Mike's got one over here. Mike's got the right flavor. Who needs the net? Who needs the net? Oh my goodness. You don't need it. Oh. Get yours, I'm gonna have to help Mark with his 38 inch northern. Well, we want to, we don't want him to bite off this blade bait, so. We'll yeah, put him in the net. Because <laughs> Kendall's not sharing anymore. <laughs> oh, I tell you, these are real gold, didn't I? All right, here we come with the net. Slip right in here. Almost, almost. That is a is. thick fish. Look <laughs> at the size of that. Oh. Well, I guess we've got all the primary predators now. We've got smallmouth. We've got all. Oh, we've got thing. pike. My goodness. Oh, he's a nice one. Not exactly what the, uh, we were looking for, but <laughs> I like pike. That's a cool fish. That is a cool fish. So apparently they'll all eat the blade. Now all three of us today are using the exact same bait. Now these uh, are made by a company that actually is known for their trolling spoons. 
uh, Wolverine tackle, they make silver streak spoons. And what we believe is making these baits work better for us than the other ones that we've used in the past is the way the lead's put on the head. They sit down like this on the bottom. They come through the weeds a lot better. The other thing is the quality that he puts into these baits. These are actually gold plated. They got real gold on them. The thickness of the blade, and then they're also clear coated and you got the little eyes on there. I mean, sometimes just the little details make a difference, especially when it's this cold. I mean, you want to have everything in your, you want to have your gun loaded when you get here, right? Things with teeth? It's out there. That's just a big one. I need a net, Mark. I can help you with that. Yeah, no, no, where is he? Where is he? I can't see him. <laughs> Good Lord, I don't believe this. Another toad. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, when you're on, so. you run. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living and bait rigs tackle. You know, despite the fact that we've been having some pretty awesome fishing today, this is the bitter end. When you start getting this late in the season after Thanksgiving, it could be over any day. And the reason it could be over is literally it could ice up here and be done. But the peak for this fishery is probably about the first week in November, not the last week in November. This isn't the first time we fished blade baits on Fishing 411. Actually, a couple of years ago, up at a walleye destination called Cag Lake, we were using blade baits and caught quite a few walleyes on them. It really is a bass lure, and it really is a lure that, that functions very well for bass, particularly in this cold water early in the season and late in the season. At well, this time of year, it's critical to make sure you're around fish. So when you get to an area and you don't catch them very quick, or you know the bite kind of slows down, it's okay to get up and move. Again, just use your electronics and seek out an area where you find some again. Now, we just made a move from an area that's mostly sand, and uh, we're going to fish an area that's got a nice weed line and then some sand and, and weed mixed, and then it goes to sand, and we're going to be fishing that middle band. And one of the things that I do that kind of makes my blades special is my hook setup. I've got hooks. Uh, this particular one has two short shank number eights. Um, and then I'll also rig them with uh, short shank number fours and sixes. And then I just determine based on the bottom content what hook size I'm gonna use. Obviously the eights work really good where there's grass. Uh, the sixes work really good where there's kind of a mix. And then I'll use the fours when I'm in open water. Running him down. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. That's not a bad one. There you go, Ken. That is a nice and old. Look at that. That's a nice one. Look, he ate that thing too. That is straight up eating a bait. Our fishing was in the northwest portion of the lower peninsula, and we hit three different bodies of water. We hit the intermediate chain of lakes. We also hit Lake Leonaw, and we also spent a little bit of time on East Grand Traverse Bay. There are many other fisheries in that geographic region that also produce really good smallmouth fishing. Oh, this is a toad. What a toad. <laughs> you know, we caught an awful lot of nice fish in this episode, but we paid the price. It was bitterly cold, and being out there in those conditions, man, it just zaps the energy from you. It was absolutely one of the coldest fishing conditions, open water fishing conditions, that I've ever been exposed to. Yeah, I think he's pretty small. This one's going be a walleye. Yeah, got out there in that deep water. Changed up the species a little bit. This lake's actually pretty well known for producing lots of walleyes. His lucky day, he's going back. Yesterday, just a second. I think that's called being a That one's not very big. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Oh, Mr. Mark. Dinner time. Wally Central. That one will probably make it. That one will make dinner. 
You think he wanted that? He's a good little one. What do I have here? Oh man. Air temperature, about 28 degrees. It's hard to imagine that you can get a fish like this to bite. Come on here, buddy. But seeing is obviously believing. The blade bite literally lasts until you can't get a boat in the water. Closed captioning is provided by Cisco Fishing Systems. Innovation makes us number one. Quality keeps us there. Fishing 411 has been brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Okuma, Vicious Fishing, Northwest Ontario Tourism, Yakima Bait, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Some things I'd rather be doing right now but they all revolve around being here. I don't ever want to go home. <laughs> now that we got that on camera, you can't. <laughs> <laughs>